Hey guys, how's it going? Mike and I are out here to just do a little night walk, see what we can see, play with some laser light across the river and see if we can attract anybody's attention. I was checking into some articles about Bigfoot in the area. Mike remembers one that was in the paper around here. I found several others from the 70s. Um, the 16th of January, 1978, a man near Oil City found 17-inch long, 7-inch wide footprints when he was out hunting. Um, there's actually a photo. This stuff is not easy to find. Looking up newspaper articles from the 70s is, that's a rabbit hole, let me tell you. And if you can find anything, you're lucky. But this was 5th of September 1977 a 16 and a half inch long 8 inch wide footprint found in Barrington, Michigan and this is from Wayne King and the Michigan Bigfoot Information Center who knew that something like that existed 40 years ago but that I don't know if you can actually see it can you see it? Up a little bit probably if you come in closer Hold it still. Yep, hold it still. Yep, yep. That is from the encounter that Mike remembers from when he was young. <clears throat> Excuse me, the encounter that I know happened, it was on the front page of the local Pioneer Press newspaper was September 1977, and there was some people that heard like a ruckus or whatever outside, and they let their dogs out, and their dogs wouldn't really go out, but they were standing, their dogs were freaking out, barking and all that, but they wouldn't go out into the yard. Come the following morning, they went outside, and they had, I think it was some kind of grapevine or some kind of, you know, fruit-bearing vine or whatnot. They were all ripped down and they found footprints in the ground and they plaster casted the footprint and at that the time the, the sheriff was a front page that said Barrington hit by Bigfoot and it was a front page article and I had one of the county sheriffs holding up the plaster cast. I had the actual newspaper from that time and I donated it to the local museum and we were going to go get it last summer but the museum was all closed all summer because of the pandemic. Yep. So, we hope to get a hold of that again. I hope they didn't throw it out. Some non-believer might have looked at it and went, oh, pff, screw this. It's but, still history of the Baritone yes, area. I hope it's still there. But so. the thing is that he remembers that. And when you go and you look at different things around here, there's actually been quite a few. And those people, I found another one. Those people that reported that, when I found their name, they actually had two reports of Bigfoot. They had one the following year. The first one was the guy and his wife. The second one was the guy was out with his buddies and they were sitting around the camp, you know, campfire outside and heard it and saw it. And there's quite a few that I found from just, you know, 10, 15 miles away from here, very much in the 70s, and they were all reported to this Bigfoot Information Center. Like I said, who knew that existed? I never heard of it either. Yeah, and if you go on their webpage, it's all old reports. I don't think it exists anymore. But this guy actually was very active. So, I mean, there's been things active in this area for at least 40-some years, if not longer. Probably longer. So we're going to go take a walk down here and see if we can play with our laser light. Our, our plan is... Dangerous laser light. We plan to walk along the river here, stop and listen. Step back here, I don't want to hit you with this. Thank and you. We're going to play with the laser light. Shine it up at the top of the hill over there. This thing has a 50 mile range, so... So they say. If there's any openings up there on the top of the hill you bet it's going across that field over there and I hope a Bigfoot would be as intrigued by a laser light as a cat is so we're gonna walk <laughs> down the river with this light light it up from time to time stop and listen see if we hear anything we'll be back in a couple minutes alrighty we're close to the rock pile as close as I ever want to get to the rock pile anyway. I should report too that before when I looked up that article about the Barrington Bigfoot, 
I was able to find an actual article from the Big Rapids Press that I can't find now. And those people had those two encounters and the way that they described where they lived, it's very close to us. Very close. Where I'm shining the laser right now is the very top of the hill over the top of the rock pile. I'd be very curious the next time I see some turkeys across the river come out and shine this and see if the turkeys will chase after it too. But like I said, I'm hoping if I know for sure this is going across that field over there if it's breaking through these trees anywhere. And I would think something would be very curious to come and check it out. So we're going to stand here and listen for a couple of minutes. Do one of your whoops. Cover the microphone. It is really quiet tonight. Except for that stupid car. crashing dragging noise Okay guys, we come down and we're standing exactly where I was standing the night the rocks were thrown. This is the same camera with the same settings and you can see this is why I wanted to use this camera. Had I had it on a tripod that night, I would have been able to get some good video. Because when it's stable on the tripod, it gets really nice video. So if it ever happens again, it's going to be on a tripod. I think you should try it off the low light setting because that flashlight is so bright. It doesn't work on an old, any other setting in the dark. It doesn't work. But we're going to listen for a bit, play with the laser some more. how that sucker reflects off the water. Mm -hmm. We're bringing the club experience to the Bigfoot. Except I'm not hot and sweaty. We're gonna take this thing out, find a really open field and see how it looks in the daytime across a big, big open field. I just, I would have to believe they'd be interested if they saw this. Or blind. <laughs> we're, we're standing directly across from the rock pile, so. Don't look, don't look directly into the light. That's what they did when they whistled at me. What a 
beautiful night, other than being cold. Uh huh. The only thing I don't like about this flashlight is it doesn't really zoom, or that's as much as it zooms in, it won't focus. It's a huge beam. It's dispersed, but it's very bright in that whole area, though. The bigger the circle, the brighter it is, the more you can see. Whistle was me. Like ten seconds ago? Yes. I would have seen him that night, guys, if I had this on a tripod. <clears throat> and if you'd been looking up. If I would have been looking in the right place. You were looking down here. Instead of up here. Now we know. That's curvy. This, watch the screen when you do that. The camera doesn't keep up with fast moving light. Ooh, tracers. <laughs> And that's how the camera reacts to the light. I'm having way too much fun with this thing. Light. I still think this will come in handy someday, guys. What if a Bigfoot chased after it like a cat? You could bring him right in front of you. Well, into view anyways. I'm gonna be listening tonight with the parabolic. Haven't heard much of nothing other than some raccoons last night. Try another whoop. Just one. you guys can hear the silence. <laughs> it's crazy quiet. That's winter. I heard something move over there, but probably a deer. Tell them about the saga of the night vision camera. The trail camera. Yeah, I'm on my... <clears throat> ordered the trail camera to record sound on the video. It didn't work right. It would only record two or three seconds of night vision video. Got a new one, replacement. It's doing the same freaking thing. We tried it out tonight. It's only recording three seconds of night vision video. It's set for 25. We tried it in the house before we put it outside, and it was fine. Put it outside, you get a two and a half second video, and then it's done. And we had it outside all day today, and every video we recorded in the daytime was the full 25 seconds. But the night vision, it won't work. 
And that sucks. You can see the IR lights come on and they just flash real quick and they're off. They're supposed to stay on the whole time it's recording. So I'm not a happy camper. We're Luckily I got the replacement before I ship back the old one so I can ship this one back too if I have to. But I think I might just ask for my money back. And uh, I don't think I'll get in any trouble for saying it's a Bushnell. That used to be a good name. That's why I bought it. I know they still make good optics, but not impressed with their trail cameras. The no-name brand trail cameras that we've got right now work better than that one. Never had any issues. It's cold, it's hard to whistle. probably get away with knocking the tree with this flashlight. It's uh, a pretty sturdy light. Kick it. Don't knock the tree with the flashlight. This is why we can't have nice things. That's sufficient. They came out just to tell you those short stories and listen. And look a little bit dry. The only sound I can hear is the water. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sure be fantastic of a rock landing in the river right now. I'm ready. And I'm running. And she's wearing the microphone that's plugged, she's clipped on, to, the microphone that's clipped on to her that's plugged into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Watch how fast that microphone will be on the ground and I will be in my house. There's windows all the way around the house, like, yeah. I think if they wanted to hurt us, they would have. Absolutely. They would have pegged you in the head with a rock. But they didn't. <clears throat> well, we're going to walk back towards our house and stop and listen a little more. All right, we've moved. About halfway back towards our house, the one rock that was thrown at me, I believe directed at me because all the other ones landed way over to my left. The one that was thrown at me landed right here, and I came back the next day and I saw it out there in the water. And Carl and I come back, we walked across the river that day, and uh, we came back and it was freaking gone. There's no explanation. How did it disappear? And I actually have it on video. You can see it in the water on the video. And I think it was gone. And it was too big to roll downstream. No explanation for that. See how crystal clear and pretty our water is. Yeah, I probably can show you that, I think. If I were a Bigfoot, this is where I would want to live. about a foot deep right there and you can see how you can see the bottom. In the summertime we'll be able to see fish very clearly. I don't know 
if this lady is going to be any help to us tonight, but perhaps. It could be way over on the other side of that field. Some of you guys that have been watching a while know how big that field is. I've shined it enough to make it blink. Anything that was there. Reflected right back in my eyes. Don't be looking at the laser light. Oh! You just blinded me when you did that. It's reflecting back on us hitting these little tree branches. Man. Was that a stick break? Did you hear it? No. to hear anything with the hair Now you did it. What happened? Just standing here. Your arm jerked out the microphone. No, she didn't run away. Her hand just hit the cord and unplugged it. I have no idea how the cord got under my arm. Alright guys, we're going to wrap it up. It's freaking cold out here. We gave it a shot. I'll have to go back and listen, but I don't know if we heard anything. thought I heard something over here. To my right. But we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later guys.